program. Our second interview is with Don Adams, the author of the book, From an Office Building with a High-Powered Rifle. I want to welcome a friend of mine, Don Adams, who, uh, in full disclosure, whose book I helped to edit. Don uh, has written a book called From an Office Building with a High-Powered Rifle, a story about his involvement in the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in November 1963. Don, thank you so much for being here with us. My pleasure. And I do want to start with the basic premise, and correct me if I am wrong, you're, you are convinced that Lee Harvey Oswald did not assassinate President Kennedy, correct? Positively. Positively. Okay, that's the premise we start with. Okay. I want to go back to 1963. You were a rookie FBI agent in a two-man office in Thomasville, Georgia. Correct. This was uh, early November 1963, and tell us about a phone call you got from an agent, a uh, special agent in charge in Atlanta. Okay, on November the 13th, uh, I had worked all day and I had just got home and was going to have dinner with my family and the phone rang and it was the agent in charge of the Atlanta FBI office, a man by the name of James McMahon. And James called me and told me that uh, he had a matter that was of urgency and that he wanted to conduct it as soon as possible and hopefully I would get started on the next morning. He explained to me that uh, they had uh, received information from uh, an informant that uh, there was a planned assassination of President Kennedy that had taken place in Indianapolis, Indiana. The conversation the with... The conversation okay. with... The, About with, the potential with the assassination. Principals, right. And the principals were in Indianapolis, Indiana on a meeting, and one of the... Uh, four individuals was a man by the name of Joseph Joseph Adams Miltier. And he was really the main person of the four people that were there. Uh, also present, which a lot of people did not know, was uh, one of our FBI informants and an informant from the Miami Intelligence FBI, uh, Miami Intelligence Police Unit. And he was up one of the four that was there also. So he had first direct knowledge of everything that Miltier was talking about. So you were, you were, as a rookie FBI agent, charged with investigating Joseph Adams Miltier because he lived in uh, Quitman, jo Quitman, Georgia. Quitman, Georgia. Okay. And Quitman, Georgia was in our territory. We had nine counties. And so my responsibility was to do everything I possibly can as quickly as possible to determine everything I can about Joseph Miltier. Tell, Joseph, us, tell us about Joseph Miltier. Joseph Miltier was a a very wealthy person because his father had left him a large inheritance. Uh, he was a very radical right-winger. He was a member of the Ku Klux Klan, uh, the American Constitution Party, and different organizations which were totally opposed as to the Kennedys was concerned. There was tremendously bitter feelings. Uh, they, He and his group were not happy, and as a result of it, they went so far as to plan the assassination. And this assassination was planned, like I said, uh, to kill him. They didn't say where they were going to kill him, but they did say that he was going to get killed. So you do your investigation. You, you dress up in bum's clothing. You, you take some of the literature that Joseph Miltier is passing out on the street, the hate literature. Yes. You, you write your investigation. You send your report in, and you think that's all. That's correct. Okay. Uh, on November 22nd, John F. Kennedy is assassinated. Uh, you get a request to call that J Jim, McMahon Jim McMahon in Atlanta. And, and what did he ask you to do at that point? Uh, he instructed me immediately to find Miltier, uh, that the Secret Service was interested in his location or whereabouts, and that I should do everything immediately, not wait till some time. And this was like 1 o'clock... Uh, no, this, this, the assassination took place at 1.30, so this was about 2 o'clock or 2.30 that I received the call. But it was immediately after the assassination that the Secret Service decided they wanted Miltier located. How did you feel? Because, you, you know, here you're being asked to investigate a man that you had sent a report in. How did you feel knowing that the president had been assassinated? Well, it devastated me. I, I never had anything shock me in my life like that because here I had just finished about a f three or a half or four day investigation on this guy and did everything. I went up and I met him and as you said I took documents and, and papers from him and that 
and all of a sudden he's now prime suspect in the killing of the president. And, and when, when I was told that the president was killed, I was devastated, and my first thoughts were, Miltier had to be involved. Right. Did I mess up? Did I make a mistake somewhere? And in the process, uh, failed to keep the president alive because of something I had done wrong. Okay, so, so uh, Lee Harvey Oswald is arrested, you know, um, as, as the potential assassin of the, of the president. You, in the meantime, start looking for, for Miltier. Tell us about what happened next. Um, I, I uh, did three investigations a day. I, I went there at morning and at noon and in the evening without failure. If I was working my cases and it was 10 o'clock at night, I still had to make that check. This was a check on his home? At his home and his girlfriend's house in Valdosta, Georgia, and a couple of haunts that he went to, known haunts that he would go to. And I did all that uh, every single day until Wednesday, the 27th of November, and then at uh, about 5.30, I went up on his girlfriend's house with my car, and as soon as I did, I saw the Volkswagen bus. So and I knew that he was driving this mm -hmm. predominantly, and so I backed off because I couldn't do it by myself. We're not permitted to get into a situation like that without backup. So I backed off, and I went to, to a payphone because we couldn't use our radios. Mm -hmm. Our radios were uh, open mic microphone to all police agencies, right. so there's no confidential information that can be exchanged or discussed. So anyway, I backed away, and I went to a payphone, and I called the FBI office in Valdosta and got a hold of Ken Williams. Mm -hmm. And I said, Kenny, I need your help. I said, we got a prime suspect. Uh, we got to find him and, and interview him, and he's here at his girlfriend's house.